Google Sheets is an online spreadsheet application that allows to create and format spreadsheets and work with other people. There are at least four different ways to open Google Sheets. First, click the Google Apps Launcher to select Sheets icon. Second, open a browser and type in sheets.google.com. Third, type in sheet.new or sheets.new in the address bar. Fourth, go to Google Drive. Click the New button, find and select Google Sheets. The data that we can put into cells of Google Sheets are text for labels or caption, numbers and formulas and functions for arithmetic operations. We can also apply formatting tools for better visuals and for data to appear more organized in a table when printed. Formatting tools can be found just right above the worksheet. For example, merge these two columns and make the text center aligned. Italicize these three texts. Change fill and font colors. To add borders, highlight all the data, select borders, then choose all borders. Before we compute, let's first talk about arithmetic operators and precedents. Arithmetic operators are the symbols that represent arithmetic math operations. Examples are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division operators. Creating a formula starts with an equal sign, for example, to add these two numbers, Type in equal sign C3 addition operator C4. It is advisable to use the names of the cell instead of putting actual numbers in the formula so that we can change the content of the cell. The result will also be updated. This technique is called cell referencing, and we are going to talk more about it in a bit. Let's do the same steps but with appropriate symbols for each of the following operations. For this table, remember that when we create a formula with several operators, Google Sheets evaluates and performs the calculation in a specific order. For example, Sheets always performs division before addition. This order is called order of operator precedence, which is basically the order of precedence that an operator is executed. You can force Sheets to override the built-in operator precedence by using parentheses to specify which operation to evaluate first. Consider this example which we need to get the average. The correct answer to 6 plus 2 which are enclosed in parentheses divided by 2 is 4. However, if we leave off the parentheses as in 6 plus 2 divided by 2, Sheets performs the calculation like 2 divided by 2 which is equal to 1, then 1 plus 6, which will result to 7. The default order of operator precedence performs division before addition. Therefore, without the parenthesis, the result is wrong. Placing the given values inside parenthesis ensures the correct answer. The order of operations is as follows. First, sheets evaluates items in parenthesis. Next, it performs exponentiation using a caret symbol. Then, it uses asterisk for multiplication and forward slash for division, which are of equal precedence. It uses plus symbol for addition and minus sign for subtraction, which are of equal precedence. Lastly, it evaluates text operators using an ampersand symbol. The equations that a user manually creates and enters in spreadsheets are called formulas. That is similar to what we just entered earlier in our example worksheet. Sheets also has a collection of predefined calculation. Let's use some of them today. We start by entering an equal sign followed by the name of the function. For example, use max to look for the largest value in a data set. Then type in open parenthesis and the cell separated by a comma. Comma is called the union operator. 
end the function with close parenthesis. After pressing the enter key, the result shows 50 and it is the correct answer. Let's answer the second question which requires a function to find for smallest number. Enter equal sign, min, open parenthesis, then highlight the data sets. Notice that the name cells separated by a colon appeared. If there are cells in between this range, they will also be included in the operation. Colon is called the range operator and the function with close parenthesis. To solve the next question, we can use average function. To find the number of numerical data in a data set, we can use count function. Count A, on the other hand, will find the number of numerical and character or word data in a given data set. We can name a range in Google Sheets to better track of them and create cleaner formulas. First, let's name ranges. Go to the Data tab and select Named Ranges. Sidebar will appear. Click the plus symbol to add a range. Type in the name, for example, quarter underscore one. Click the Select Data Range icon, go to the worksheet, then highlight all the included cells. Notice that the range is now specified in the text field. Click OK button, then press the Done button. If you need to edit or delete, just simply hover the mouse pointer to the name and click the pencil icon on the right. Here we can edit or remove the named range. Take note that removing the range will not delete the content in the cells, but formulas and references that rely on the name of this range may break. When naming a range, remember the following rules. It can contain only letters, numbers, and underscores. It can't start with a number or the words true or false. It can't contain any spaces or punctuation. It must be 1 to 250 characters. It can't be a cell name. Let's complete the table by creating named ranges for quarter 2, quarter 3, and quarter 4. Then we'll also use those names in the function. A cell reference or cell address is a combination of a column letter and a row number that identifies a cell on a worksheet. It has three types, which are the following, relative reference, absolute reference, and mixed reference. By default, Sheets uses relative references. Relative cell references are basic cell references that adjust and change when copied or when using autofill. See the formula in cell Z4. The cell points to cell X4 and cell Y4. Both references are relative. We can easily apply this formula to other rows by using autofill feature. This feature automatically fill data in worksheet cells. To autofill, select the cell, move your mouse pointer to the small square at the lower corner of it, click and hold while dragging to the cells you want to fill. And the formula is filled in automatically. Notice that when moved or copied to other cells, relative references change based on the relative position of rows and columns. This is best if you want to repeat the same calculation across several columns or rows. Absolute cell reference is one that does not change when it's moved, copied, or filled. It points back to the same cell, no matter where it is moved. It's indicated by a dollar sign in the column and row coordinate. To create an absolute reference to cell Z11, place a dollar symbol in front of the column letter and row number in the formula of cell X11. Now, we can quickly drag this formula to the other cells. 
the reference to cell Z11 is fixed. As a result, the correct equivalent values are calculated. A mixed reference is made up of both an absolute reference and relative reference. Therefore, part of the reference is fixed, either the row or the column, and other part is relative. The formula here is this. X $17 is an example of mixed reference. Column X is relative while row 17 is fixed. In the example, the reason behind this is the reference to the price should be a fixed reference to row 17. So we place a dollar symbol in front of the row number in the formula of cell X20. We don't place a dollar symbol in front of the column letter of X17 because we will allow the reference to change from X17, which refers to the ball's price, to Y17, which points to the doll's price when we drag the formula to the right. Remember that when we drag cell X20 to the right, the reference to the discount rate should be a fixed reference to cell W23. So we make it an absolute reference in the formula of cell X20. Now, we can quickly drag this formula to the other cell. We come to an end of this video lesson. I hope I have given some light to your knowledge on Google Sheets.